In today's video, we're going to finish the cedar chest build. But before I do that, um, I forgot to mention in my last video that I created plans for the cedar chest. Um, I put them on my Etsy store, so I'll put a link in the description um, where you can go find those plans. Um, but I wanted to show you, before I get into the build, what those plans look like, so you kind of know what you're going to get. So let's jump on over to the computer and uh, show you these plans. All right, so they are PDF plans, full color, and it has all the um, uh, overview. It's got the dimensions. It's got a bill of material. I mean, it's just got everything you need to build this cedar chest. Um, and if it's not in here, you can probably see it or get the information you need on the uh, build videos. Um, also, with these plans, you'll also get a DXF of all the templates that I use to make the cedar chest. Um, they are, there's two different cut paths on these. There's a through cut and um, some pocket cuts, and I broke them out into layers. Um, so I'm using draft site, so you can see these in draft site, or you could also look at these on a free one called Libre CAD. Um, but hopefully the CAM package that you are using has a way to distinguish layers. So the one I'm using is ESDL CAM. And when I open up one of these files and I turn on the layers, I can see which layer is what and what is what it's gonna do like. So this one right here is a pocket layer. So if I turn off these other two, I can see that that's the pocket. If I turn these back on, make them active, now I can see all the other layers. So this is how I do my tool pass and know what depth to do them at. So I have a through cut, which is the outside perimeter. All right, so these plans are pretty detailed. And if you want to support the channel and want to build this cedar chest, head on over to my Etsy store and pick up those plans. So now, without further ado, let's finish with the cedar chest build. start this video I'm working on the lid. Now um, this lid is quite wide so I couldn't get it through my table saw on the sled so I'm just using a skill saw and my router to get it a nice flush edge on two ends. Um, now the way I designed this was I wanted a curved look to it um, with the different woods like the ambrosia maple and the walnut. Um, so the front edge is going to be walnut and that's going to be followed behind a strip of ambrosia maple and then another strip of walnut. So you'll see that in a minute um, how that's going to look. Um, but here I'm just cutting out the curves to um, both the main panel and the front edge and then following it up with um, trimming it on my uh, trim router. All right, so like I said, I wanted two thin strips of ambrosia maple and walnut, so I'm just getting those down to thickness um, on the drum sander. Now the two ends, i um, going to have the same thing. It's going to kind of like racing stripes. Um, I'm gluing these both at the same time together, leaving a dry joint between them. Um, it's just, I don't have a lot of clamps, and uh, this is the easy way to do it. I did put some pieces of wood on the edge of those scrap piece so that when I clamped it together I didn't damage the walnut and now I'm just using calling blocks to um, get everything nice and flush. Those little strips like to move around when they're glued. Same thing here, I'm just using a piece of tape on the black walnut so that when I do clamp this together it doesn't, it's not glued to the main panel because I did make these a little thicker um, so that I could run them through the planer after a glue up. I did make sure I had quite a bit of um, extra on the ends because those are going to be mitered in with the end pieces. 
All right, now we're going to just run these through the planer, get them all cleaned up and ready for um, fitting. Now I need to make sure I mark center so I can get everything lined up and it looks right. Just double check, make sure I got everything marked. You've heard the old term, measure twice, cut once. So that's what I'm doing. Now fitting these corners took quite a bit of time. Um, as I was getting everything, I just wanted everything marked and laid out just right. Cause I really got one shot at this. So these pencils, um, Cam from Blacktail Studios mentioned, and um, I wasn't gonna get them at first, but I thought, you know what, let's give it a try. And I am quite impressed with these pencils. All right, now with the front and sides marked, I can go ahead and use my miter saw to cut the angles. Um, but I did notice I was having a problem. As I was cutting through the material, the saw blade would kind of deflect to the side and I was getting a gap on the top. So after trying several times with the saw to get it, I finally resorted to a block sander to get these so they were nice and tight. Kind of a pain in the butt. So after some work and working on it, I finally got it nice and flat and smooth and they joined up really nicely. So I decided to use biscuits to attach the um, front edge of this just to help for alignment uh, when I do the glue up. And then I went ahead and added biscuits to the miter joint as well, just again to help with alignment to make sure everything comes out flush. Now, you probably noticed throughout all, most of these videos is I'm like test fitting everything just to make sure that everything is nice and tight before I actually add glue. I just, I hate to get to a glue up and things just don't line up. So that's the reason I do a lot of test fitting. For the end pieces, I decided to use uh, loose mortises or loose tenons. And uh, same as the legs when I was attaching them to the back panel, um, you've got end grain going against a long grain. And I just want, felt like loose tenons were the best option here. So this jig is, um, I did create a new jig that's a lot more versatile than the one you're seeing here. I'll put a link in the description below to my Etsy store for that, as well as the video. Man, who needs a $1,200 domino? All right, back to the basement to uh, glue this up. So during the glue up, I am really happy that I did all the time test fitting because it went together really smoothly. Now, because I don't have long enough clamps, I had to clamp, take two clamps and attach them together so I can get all the way across this lid. Um, and now I'm making sure that with the joints where the two pieces come together and the lid comes together with the uh, sides, that I use a clamp at those joints to make sure that everything is nice and flush. Um, I'm just trying to save myself a lot of sanding if they don't end up flush. 
All right, I'm adding some holes just like the back where I'm gonna use dowels. Now I didn't punch all the way through the top, um, just enough where I can get a dowel in through those loose tenons. Just make sure everything gets nice and locked together. Now, trying to get those uh, joints and everything nice and flush with the uh, belt sander and then coming back through with the palm sander or orbital sander to get everything nice and flush and smooth. And then just trimming the back so it's nice and flat. All right, now I can focus my attention to the trim that's gonna go around the front panels and the side panels. Um, now the design I had in mind was to put a piece of walnut trim around there um, just to give it a, a pop um, after everything is nice and varnished. So I have several pieces of that I need to cut out. So I'm also cutting out some test pieces out of the ambrosia maple along with the black walnut that I'm going to use. So same procedure as before, adding my uh, templates to each piece and using the flush trim router to get everything nice and flush. All right, now to the horizontal router table. Now this is a router table that I made and created a video and plans for. Um, I'll put a link in the description below if uh, you decide to um, try this cedar chest and um, make it, um, you'll need a horizontal router table to make the trim. So I needed to add a curve piece, which is the exact uh, same radius as the trim. Now I'm just fitting in my feather boards because um, as someone mentioned on my video making this horizontal router table, that having the router bit on top pinches the material against the table itself and it could eject the material out. So by adding these feather sticks, it's gonna help prevent that. And I also added a um, box with dust collection at the top, as well as that's kind of a guard to help save my fingers if I were to get too close. Now this process took quite a bit of time because I had a lot of trim to do. Um, I did take like a 16th off each pass. Um, you do not want to take a lot of material off per pass. Um, it just, it will not turn out very well. Now keeping the same setup, I just decided, you know what, let's make the uh, straight trim as well. And you can just see how much dust and chips that thing makes. The dust collection didn't quite work as well as I had hoped. All right, now I needed to create a quarter inch um, lip on the back side of this trim. That's gonna overlap um, the center panel um, as I put them into that. I just wanted it to overlap. I didn't want to see any gap between the two pieces. Now, because I had so many pieces of curved trim I needed to cut, I didn't want to fiddle with cutting and fitting in um, each piece. So I cut out a template on the CNC, which is included in the plans so that it makes it easy to cut this. So I just line up this jig right next to the saw blade and double stuck it down to it. And then I could cut each side. And then after I get one side done, I flip the jig around, line it up with the saw blade, double stick it down, and then make sure that the edge of the trim is flush to the backside before I make the other cut. 
this worked out really well and made it really simple and I didn't have to figure out all the different angles. Now, hand sanding, just to make sure everything is nice and smooth before I glue these pieces together. This took a lot of time. There's a lot of trim to sand. All right now to get the angles for this, the um, side straight trim. This took a little bit more time than I was hoping, but uh, I did get it figured out. All right now I decided to attach these together before um, putting them to the main um, cedar chest themselves. I figured. Um, if I did this, I made sure all the joints were nice and tight. Um, this is a lot easier, I figured. Then I could also sand anything that I needed to before actually attaching them to the cedar chest. This did take some time, but it turned out really well. Now I'm using a, I think it's a 23 gauge nailer. Um, I found this at Harbor Freight. Um, as a weekend warrior, I'm not going to spend a ton of money at um, buying tools that I just don't use professionally. Um, so Harbor Freight is a nice option to find tools that um, are not expensive, but will get the job done. Now, as you can see, that turned out really nice. All right, now I can add a little bit of glue and then attach the trim pieces into the front and side panels, making sure everything's centered and the lip is overhanging. Now using the uh, 23 gauge nailer, I can go ahead and attach those trim pieces on. Now with the trim on, I can focus on the drawer. Now these are just uh, pieces of half inch poplar I machined down. I'm just getting that uh, groove to the right size of the bottom panel which is just a piece of eighth inch masonite. Now these are just simple drawers, um, just butt joints, glue, and nails to hold it all together. Now the back piece, I cut the groove off um, because I'm gonna have the back, or actually the bottom panel, slide in and I can just attach it um, on the back side. Now just to hold it in place, a couple pins, and then I'll come back and follow it in with some screws. All right, because this is such a long drawer and I'm afraid that the uh, bottom panel is gonna sag over time, I decided to add a center divider. I'm just gluing and tacking these in with some nails and then I'll come back through and follow it in with some screws. All right, I need to find a, a good countersink drill bit combo. Um, it just takes a lot of time to switch out bits. So if you know of a good one that's not terribly expensive, uh, please leave a comment uh, below. Now I can flip it over and add some screws to the bottom, attaching um, the bottom to the center divider. Now for the drawer slide. So what I did is I just laid this flat on my workbench and made sure the drawer slide was touching the, the workbench and then I just attached it using the screws. All right, now to add the uh, other part of the drawer slide to the actual cedar chest itself. Now I'm just attaching a um, just temporary piece of um, half inch MDF so I can butt the um, drawer slide right next to it. And just using my square and getting it to the right position before I attach it. So I'm shooting for um, having the drawer front stick out about an eighth proud of the front panel. Um, it's just, I didn't want to get it flush. Um, I wanted to just 
to stick out just a little bit. So I, I wanted to make sure I got that drawer slide right where it needed to be. Now with the drawer slides installed on both the cabinet and the uh, drawer, I can get it installed and uh, make sure it moves in and out smoothly. These are supposed to be self-closing drawer slides, so I think it works okay. Uh, I mounted it too far back. Remember how I said I wanted that uh, drawer front to stick out proud of the front panel? Well, I miscalculated. It was about a half inch farther in than I wanted. So with the uh, drawer slides reinstalled and everything um, where it's supposed to be, it's looking pretty nice. I decided to break the top edge of that drawer front uh, just to give it a smooth look. And now I need to attach it to the drawer itself using some cardboard spacers to get it spaced right where it needs to be. Um, I can go ahead and add some spring clamps to hold it in place while I pull it out and add some screws. So I figured using four screws would be sufficient to attach the drawer front to the drawer itself. All right, that just gives it a nice finishing touch. Isn't that looking awesome? All right, now it's time to install the lid. Um, I'll put a link in the description for these hinges, um, but I'm just making sure that the lid has the same reveal um, on the two sides, the same amount of overhang. Um, with that determined, I can go ahead and pre-drill for screws. Now, when I installed the first screw, I made the mistake of using my drill and I broke the screw, so I had to pull that broken screw out and then just add more um, using a screwdriver so I didn't break it. Now with everything sanded and um, ready for vin finish, I decided to spray on three coats of uh, water-based polyurethane. Um, I really like the water-based, it doesn't yellow over time and it goes on nice and smooth, whether it's with a brush or a sprayer. Um, I do like the sprayer because it's a lot quicker, but you do have to be careful not to do too heavy, otherwise it will run. Now this sprayer is one that um, I saw another YouTuber talk about, um, and it they really hyped it up, and so I bought it, and it, it works great, both with paint and with varnish. You just got to be careful you don't get too much overspray. You got to keep that sprayer moving, otherwise the paint or varnish will build up and it'll run. Now after uh, several coats um, and sanding in between each coat to get a nice smooth finish, now the finish is done. I can go ahead and add the actual cedar to the cedar chest. Um, so this is a closet lining cedar that I found at my local Menards and I'm just uh, spacing them, giving them a little space between each one um, just for moisture expansion. Um, now I'm just attaching it with some brads. Now this Ryobi nailer is a 16 gauge one, actually the 18 gauge one, and I seem to have problems with it misfiring quite often. All right, now adding the lining to the front. Now you got to be careful not to go into the center panels. You got to go on the uh, I think they're the mullions. Um, they're thicker and you won't blow out through them if you use the right size nail. Now, adding cedar is not necessarily, but if you want that nice smell of the cedar chest, it's a must. 
Now I need to use a multi-tool to remove some of the cedar so it accommodates the hinge and the lid support. Does that look professional to you? No. So what do I do? I think I need to take that off, replace it with some new cedar, figure out another way. All right, with uh, a new piece of cedar in there, I still cut it out for the hinge. I figured that would look all right with the hinge there. Um, but I did trace the lid support profile and drilled out and used my router to pocket that out. I think just give it a little more professional look. The lid supports I found at my local Woodcraft. Um, I'll see if I can find a link and add that. Um, I just don't remember which one I used. So apparently I have a short memory because here I am using my drill to attach the screws to the hinges and the lid support. Luckily, none of them broke. Because I was on a time crunch to get this done, I completely spaced doing a closing for the cedar chest build. Um, but I included some photos here of the cedar chest uh, through the process and some photography that I took. I was trying to be a little professional here, but I'm not a professional, but I thought these photos turned out pretty good. So this cedar chest is going to get many years of use, and uh, I hope to see you next time here on Smedley Wood Design.